joining us today on Millennial Talk. We'll discuss issues affecting millennials and give recommendations on how to deal with them. In the past few weeks, we've been discussing entrepreneurship, tech. We've, been, we've even discussed with tech founders, um, women in tech and why women should be interested in tech. And, you know, from fashion to lifestyle. And today will be no different. But before we go on, Josephine. Hi, Josephine. Hi. It's actually been an exciting month. I kind of like how we've had like a bit of twists and turns for the month. And definitely looking forward to this conversation. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but before we go on, we have a collaboration with Mr. Choco, Sister Choco. So they are sponsoring, you know, giving us goodies. And we have giveaway prizes for you guys. So you guys should just please... So, you know stick with us and follow the trivia and you know just yeah so if you'd like to participate um on, uh, on the giveaway on our social media space you can follow us on instagram and twitter and mr choco and you follow web tv as well you tag five of your friends you comment and like and watch out for the trivia questions participate and you stand a chance to win amazing prizes as you watch the space yeah exactly as the fourth industrial revolution tech you know, is going to take over things. And we've seen that happen. 400,000 people left their jobs last year in the US. And we're seeing more people leaving their jobs, pivoting to tech. You know, everybody's talking about tech. But, you know, so you might feel left out if you're not in tech and all of those things. <laughs> but anyway, we're going to be discussing how, you know, this tech thing is going to take over and how tech, how you can navigate yourself, especially when it comes to workplace in this whole new world. Yeah. And I believe that the classroom has to reimagine strategize you know our curriculum education especially in nigeria just what do you think yeah i think you're right and even in the workplace with tech in the workplace we have organizations they have started to transform how they do their business and the kind of staff the kind of skill set that they require for their staff and they have even upscaled and with tech in this space we believe that even the full-time workspace would be affected maybe there would be like you know a reduction in full-time work in the workforce and also a lot of um, workers in organizations will be forced to actually upskill to stay relevant in the workplace and uh, you know with all these questions lingering we are not going to be having this conversation alone we have someone exciting in the house and of course we're also in a different space i'm sure you have noticed by now right <laughs> anyways we are live here at utiva and we are sitting with the ceo the founder Founder of Utiva, and his name is Aitayo Ogumola. Welcome yes. to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having Hi, me. Hi, Aitayo. Hello. It's glad to have you. We are glad to have you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you for having this, me. Um, and we look forward to a very exciting conversation. So we want to like tap into your space and like you know we always like like bringing people that have a lot of oil in their head. So we, you know we just wanna we wanna learn something yeah, new today. Exactly. And we believe that the audience will be excited to learn something new today great. as well. Great, yeah. great, great. Let's do it. Yeah. Please give us a brief introduction yeah. about yourself and tell us how you um were you were inspired to dive into this you know line of work. Yeah, so certainly. Thank you so much um, for for coming and coming to our space. Mm -hmm. um, Aitayo is my name. Um, I am the chief executive of Utiva. Utiva mm -hmm. is a is a space where we build people to survive and become successful mm -hmm. in the future. Uh, the dynamics are a little bit different because we are helping people to learn technology skills. Mm -hmm. um, certainly because technology is disrupting everything that Definitely. we do. And if you're going to survive and win in the future, the technology has to be um, pivotal to your strategy. Mm -hmm. um, so we are like a virtual school that helps you to learn every technology skill or any technology skill okay. from data science to cybersecurity to product design, you wow. know, think of it. Um, I started Utiva because, I mean, personally, I really struggled, you mm -hmm. know, um, when I left the university. I was really excited about leaving school. I thought I was going to be a millionaire at the age of 23. <laughs> we all know. thought so. Yeah. Don't worry. You're not alone. <laughs> <laughs> but I got into the job market and I really struggled with unemployment for mm -hmm. two years. And you can imagine what it is to run around Lagos looking for jobs I'm for two um, years. Yeah. I got lucky. You know, I moved into the U.S., uh, but when I got into the U.S., that was when I realized that I was not really prepared mm. for global opportunities. You can be a local champion, right? True, true. Doing well here. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody celebrates you. But when you are placed at par with your colleagues across the world, uh, you realize that, you're you know, not, the, edu yeah, the educational <laughs> system here really failed us. Yeah. We were taught to um, come to class read our books, cram, pour it back, you know. Mm -hmm. We're not taught really to think on our thoughts, you know. Mm -hmm. We're not taught to create. Mm -hmm. And 
I just thought to myself in 2016 that, you know what, let me just move back to Nigeria, mm -hmm. um, start something to educate Africans and prepare them for the future of work. Mm -hmm. um, and then 2018, we started Utiva. But before the Utiva that you see today, mm -hmm. we were literally working with undergraduates in the university, just helping them to learn skills. Mm -hmm. uh, but that was not a sustainable market, so we mm -hmm. had to pivot mm -hmm. um, and deal with a more mature market, believing that if we are successful at a more mature market, we can do a backward integration to an undergraduate market and you know but the goal is to help people learn mm -hmm. uh, because we know that if you learn you'll become more successful yeah, exactly definitely. and that's why we do what we do i love the word backward in, um, integration you know and i'm um, looking at the skill set that i feel like um, many gro young graduates would need many people don't know they don't know that you know people think tech 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 and everybody mm -hmm. wants people to tech so but yes. how can we determine the skills that will be needed for the new workplace yeah, I mean, there are three different approaches, if you, if you think about it. Very basic, mm -hmm. very three different approaches. Number one is, you need to make sure that you are sound um, at the soft skills level, yeah. you know. Because tech will do its job, but tech will not communicate for you. Yeah. Tech will not help you build relationship. Yeah. So soft skills like leadership, communication, emotional intelligence, um, writing skills, are the very basic skills that, yeah. you know, recent graduates, and not just recent graduates, you know, regardless of where you are. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you come to our product school, for example, at Utiva, we are training you on how to pitch like a pro. Because we know that having built the product, mm -hmm. you have to take the product yeah. to the market, you know. So yeah, these are soft true. skills. Um, but I will talk more about the technology skills. The ways we think about the technology skills are kind of in two different categories. Okay. There are skills that are not premium. Mm -hmm. And when I say not premium, not because they are not important, but because, you know, the priority of the global economy is not so much heavy on those skills, mm -hmm. right? But there are skills that are premium skills. Skills that if you master them today, you know, your, your destiny is settled. He's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> you, you know if, you, if you think about it, right? Some people in the UK work from home. In the US, in yeah. Canada, they just work from home. You get to their sitting room, they have like five different computers. Mm -hmm. They have three jobs. So they are being paid in pounds three different times i mean we yeah. myself and my team spoke with a lady that worked with microsoft yesterday mm -hmm. she's a cloud professional at microsoft okay she's a big girl mm -hmm. right i mean you know how much you earn now when you work with microsoft, microsoft as a cloud yeah. engineer so we're talking about skills that are premium uh, and then these skills are not very easy to learn because they are premium and because they are not easy to learn not everyone is jumping in the skills, right? Not everyone is in that space. Mm -hmm. So just a few people. And you know what they say about when scarcity increases? Your price. You know, the price of commodity, you know, you're an economist. <laughs> you know, the price of the commodity increases. So okay. you talk of skills like data science, like mm -hmm. cloud, um, cloud computing, artificial intelligence, product management, which is the leadership side of tech, product design. I had a, I had a friend that actually moved into the UK and got a job in two months. Wow. You know, as a product designer. That's this crazy. is a country where some people might be there for two years and still, and still not still have don't a job. Get anything. Yeah. So it's about the skill that you bring to this kind of economies. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about what kind of technology skills should our young people and our older people would also be learning, mm -hmm. we're talking about where are the opportunities? Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. what are companies aggressively hiring for? Okay. You know, and where are the opportunities? And also, where are the scarcities? So you check some vacancies in the UK. They will tell you if you get the, if you have the skill, we will sponsor your visa. Mm, yeah, not because yeah, not yeah. everyone has those skills. Like that, yeah. yeah, not everyone has that skill. So premium skills. Every young person should focus on premium skills. Premium skills that will position you for job opportunities locally and job opportunities internationally. Wow, great. Yeah. Okay, getting hot in here, but before we continue the conversation, we'll take a quick commercial break, and when we're back, we'll be here to continue the conversation. Don't go anywhere. Make the children they happy, all the people they like I'm being and night. Every day is tasty, cause you were always present in my life. Hi guys, so we are back to continue the conversation. 
Hi, Justin. Okay. All right. So, um, moving on to the next question. My next question would be about, you know, uh, digital skills. So, in the future of work, where all things are now digital, in which ways can millennials actually learn new skills, you know, to improve themselves? Like, you know, the address mm -hmm. economy. Let's not even talk about the economy, but, you know, for millennials looking out there, they'd be like, she mentioned earlier that she wants to, you know, she wants to upscale. Oh, so, yes. they mm -hmm. want to know how they are going to improve themselves, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mean, when, as much as we are digitalizing things, mm -hmm. um, we can't take the human away from the entire digitalization. Yes, right? definitely. Um, so, one good and sound area, and this is what we have done for more than 7,000 people. I can tell you for free that if you want to learn a skill and you really want to learn the skill in a much more sustainable way, mm -hmm. you know, a, an approach that gives you interaction is still one of the best, you know. Uh, so one of the best ways to learn is to look for a platform that gives you opportunities not to learn alone, mm. you know, because you don't know what you don't know, right? Sure. And you also yeah. want to be able to collaborate with other people, mm -hmm. learn with people, get inspired by their story, yeah. you know. And that's one of the things I like so much about interactive learning. Mm. That's one of the ways you can learn a technology skill. But the, the truth is, it's the opportunity, the barrier to entry is so low mm -hmm. that you can go on YouTube and True. watch a video. Yeah. You, know, you can go on YouTube and watch, exactly, yeah. you can learn on your own. Mm -hmm. you, know, you might not get the entire vibe of you know, collaborating with people mm -hmm. and all those calls, but if you, my own recommendation would be learn by collaboration, then learn by self pace to reinforce your learning. Mm -hmm. So there's so much to learn, so and you can actually. continue to watch videos. Mm -hmm. But the best approach is a projectized learning. The learning that gives you the opportunity to work on projects. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm sure my tech friends would agree with me that the difference between a junior tech professional and a senior tech professional is the number of projects yeah. they've worked on. Yeah. You understand? I so if you agree. really want to move from being junior to senior, mm -hmm. engage on multiple projects. So look yeah. for a training program that gives you the opportunity to to work on projects, you know. Yeah. But the traditional schools will be digitalized. You know, there is no escape. Mm -hmm. You know, the faster the schools wake up to that reality and they smell the coffee, mm -hmm. the better they can out-compete their competitors in a space that is quite very competitive. Yeah. So every school would have to digitalize their approach one way or the other. One thing I like to emphasize as a, as a, you know, an entrepreneur in this space, as someone who has a lot of experience in the learning space is to say that we will never digitalize completely to 100%, right? Yeah. Because learning is not financial services. No, it's not. Learning is human, human. facing. Yeah. And mm -hmm. we'll still have to retain, you know, our human connectivity. Sure. So schools that also develop their faculty, mm -hmm. you know, to adapt to the new norm would also, you know, do better in the future where the, where people are building technology products mm -hmm. and people think that, oh, if we just digitalize, we are okay. You know, they will now wake up to the reality that digitalization helps to solve the problem, but human interaction and human connectivity really solves a lot of problems better. True. So if you combine the two approach, digitalization and improve human interaction, mm -hmm. you have the best pedagogy for learning. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the way I kind of think about, you know, training for the future. And for right. those that want to learn skills, you know, look for the two things, mm -hmm. not just one of them. Yeah, yeah. You know, I was actually going to go back to, you know, the educational system, but you addressed that and how, you know, schools, especially from secondary school level, because we're seeing that it starts from a young age. It's not just about, oh, um, getting to university level. You don't have to wait to university mm -hmm. level. But well, now let's go on to how to, Nigeria is home to one of, like, many of the best tech talents on the continent. Absolutely. So yeah. how can um, talents like this, you know, like they um, put the, put themselves out there on an international level so that they can also they can be pushed. Let me use that word. <laughs> you know, they can publicize themselves. They can let people know what they are doing. So you know they can get remote jobs mm -hmm. and you know all of those things. Yes. yes. I mean there are a bunch of different recommendations. If you don't stop me, I'll continue, right? <laughs> uh, because this is like the part of the entire um, value chain that I'm more excited about. Mm -hmm. People thriving economically. People becoming successful. Yeah. That's the essence of learning, right? And I usually tell the people that come to our learning programs when I have the opportunity to talk to them that the opportunities across the globe, you know, for you is way more than what you can ever imagine. And that's at 2000 and 
18. I never knew a country would give me a visa for free oh. without a struggle that people, there was no interview, there was we nothing. We go to you know, yeah. And that's <laughs> just because, you know, you are a tech talent, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It's a competition. We need to understand that countries are competing for talent. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. UK is competing with the US, US is competing with India. India. Everyone is competing for talent. Mm -hmm. But the talent sit here. True. You know, in a talent city in our country where we are not competing. Yeah, oh, imagine. You know, yeah. The, the country does not even care. There's no motivation. If you are talented. Yeah, yeah. because and we have so much talent. And we have a lot of that. Yeah, you know. Yeah. But if people really want to position themselves for global opportunities, it will not come, you know, um, as a bed of roses. True. You still have to do a bit of work. Mm -hmm. The first recommendation is that you need to up your game mm -hmm. by learning to speak the language of international communities. Oops. You know. Not necessarily uh, speaking better <laughs> English. You, know. okay. you need to learn to be analytical in the way you think. Mm -hmm. You need to learn to Strategic. do virtual calls. You know, because you're going to be, inter your interview is going to be virtual. Definitely. You need to learn to build relationship. I mean, I never knew really how to build relationship until 2016 when I moved to the US. That was when I realized that every evening I had to attend happy house. Whoa. You know, where you're sharing beer with people, mm -hmm. people are standing, yeah, the music is loud, you're networking. Mm -hmm. So this soft side of tech, relationship, communication, and all these things are really, really lacking here. Yeah. You know, yeah. in this that's, part of that's the world. Very true. That's very Our true. guys are good developers, but when it comes to um, expressing, you know, expressing and connecting and all this stuff, people still have a little bit a little of deficiency yeah. in that area. Finally is, you need to know that you are competing with other economies like India, hmm. China, where their talents too are smart. Mm -hmm. So yeah. what you know today, you need to be able to demonstrate it. And how do you demonstrate? By building your portfolio. Yeah. So if you have learned data science at Utiva, right? Don't just say I've learned data science, now I can get a job abroad. No, it doesn't work that way. You need to double down on working on projects here and there, documenting the stories of your projects, and remember that the world is waiting for you. Mm -hmm. There's one of our successful stories, not a YouTuber actually, but a Nigerian worked with Andela. Left Andela, went to Canada, worked with KPMG. Left KPMG, now just joined uh, Facebook as a product designer. So people actually move the trajectory. Mm -hmm. But if you talk to this guy, you know that this guy is not ordinary. Not ordinary. Communication, <laughs> sound. Right. Management, sound. Not someone that you give a project to do mm -hmm. and will go mute on you. You know, relationship building sound. The tech is just the 50% of the entire equation. Yeah. You need to be sound in the other areas, you know, of service delivery. Someone needs to have a call with you and can rapport with you for five minutes even before the interview. Right. You know, you can mention things that are happening in Rwanda, in Africa, mm -hmm. and you person can learn from you about the African story even before the call, you can win the heart of the person in the True. conversation. True. But our tech guys are guys that just want to wear hoodies and, and, and sit down, careful. put the headphones. <laughs> no, that is not the real story abroad. Yeah. And then people are connecting, people are building mm -hmm. relationships, mm -hmm. you know. And nobody wants to hire you just to code. Sure. People want to hire you to code, good, to build relationships, and mm -hmm. you have the capacity to lead others. True. So you need to be able to demonstrate leadership. And these are things that typical tech schools don't teach. You know, they just tell you you code, you are good. No, no, no. That's <laughs> not it. It's a lot more than that. Yeah. So to answer your question, I would say balance the soft side of tech with the technical side of tech. You're good to go. Hmm. Wow, wow. That's great. interesting. Yeah. A, a lot of rema is coming right <laughs> now. <laughs> Anyways, so um, my next question would be: so I mean, Utiva has been on for a while now. Uh, what we would like to know is how. Utiva has played a role in helping people upskill. So what is Utiva doing to further help people upskill and mm -hmm. how has it done it so far? Yeah, yeah, this is where I get to talk about Utiva. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this is, this is the thing. I mean, Utiva's mandate is kind of divided into three, mm -hmm. right? And that's one of the things I like to you know, share with our friends and our you know, colleagues. The first mandate is to lower the barrier to entry. Okay. You, know, you see someone, um, I mean, I had one of our students talk to us you know, from University of Lagos, <laughs> you know, yeah. um, was super frustrated and was confused about what to do. And, I, and it came to me and said, Itai, uh, I don't think anybody's going to hire me because I had to talk class. And I said, see, in tech, you know, in banking, maybe they care. Yeah. In, in tech, we don't care. 
What we care about is can you deliver? They are not saying that on the ground you should be a contract. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. But in tech, you double down on can you deliver? You have the skills. You have the competence. So he joined one of our data program lens. In March, we had the conversation. In April, he told me he now works at a, as a data analyst in a financial services company. Wow. The job of Utiva, right, is to lower the barrier to entry. Right. I know guys that also deliver learning at a much more premium level, mm -hmm. but our goal is to serve the African market, a market of people that, you know, really economically struggle, and we want them to be successful. You know, um, women that are single mothers, Mm -hmm. You know, I have someone in a product school, single mother paying the school fees of the kids, paying the house rent, low income job, wants to learn product management. That person will not pay a premium if you want. So it's a question of do we want this continent to be successful? Mm -hmm. It's a continent of, continent of 650 million young people. By 2030, our own job is to lower the barriers so that everyone can get an opportunity to learn. Now, a little beyond that, our, our job as a company is to now attract employers and say, hey, these guys have learned. Employers, if you're looking to hire people, talk to us. Mm -hmm. you know? So the work, and that's how we build our data program, mm -hmm. our cloud program, our product school, our design school, our, um, you know, our marketing school, all our schools. That's how we build them. We build them around, we need to lower the barrier to entry and we need to give opportunity to young people, old people to learn. So in the past uh, few years that we've been in existence, almost 9,000 people have gone through our learning programs. Wow. You know, um, we've been supported really by uh, organizations like Facebook, MIT Sol. Uh, we just got a partnership with HP to okay. train women and girls. We're exploring a partnership with the likes of Microsoft to give opportunities to people with disabilities. You know. Every time you think about Utiva, you need to remember that our job is tough, is to lower the barriers so much mm -hmm. that someone with disability can learn a tech skill and be successful. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, one of our staff members that I'm so, um, our, our, our ex-staff members that I'm so much proud of, uh, worked with us as in, the, in the digital marketing team, left Utiva to go and become a product manager, and she had a disability, but she's really thriving. And then she sells that same vision to every other oh, young that people. That, hey, yeah. you have disability, come learn tech, mm -hmm. you will try. Definitely. And that's the YouTuber mandate, you know, that's our mandate, to lower the barrier to entry. Mm. That's actually interesting amazing. and amazing, <laughs> yeah. Okay, but now, coming back to regulations in the country, mm -hmm. we've seen what has happened with... Um, not just um, cryptocurrency, we've seen fintech generally, because fintech is like one of the most thriving sectors when it comes to technology in Nigeria. <laughs> and looking at the new NITDA Act that is about, you know, that is being, you know, explored, what are your thoughts on what the government can do to ensure that digital innovations like, like yours, you mm -hmm. know, can, uh, can thrive and ensure that, you know, ideas, you know, you don't kill young people's <laughs> ideas, exactly. especially. So how do you think, you know, government can just help us <laughs> to <laughs> protect yeah. our talent? Yeah, yeah. 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 exactly. I mean, let me, let me give you a few thoughts, right? And I will try as an entrepreneur, um, and I will also try as someone that really loves Nigeria. I mean, I love Nigeria so much, that's why I live here, that's why I stay here, that's why I'm building here. Um, it's tough on the both end of the spectrum, mm. you know? It's tough for the entrepreneur that are building in this country. Mm -hmm. Because if you're building here, you have to pay for electricity, yeah. you pay for water, mm -hmm. you pay staff, you pay for everything. everything. Yeah. And then you still have to pay the government, true, the tax. True. And then you still have bad roads because you don't know what the government now spends your money on. So it's tough for the entrepreneurs, right? Mm -hmm. On the other hand of the spectrum, it's tough for the people in the government too, right? Because the folks that are in the government, the job they have is to create an environment that does not accommodate chaos. Okay. So it's tough for both ends. The government needs to regulate so that you don't wake up one day and just run away with that data. Exactly, and you run away with the money. Imagine a lot of people have money in some of these amazing great platforms. Yeah. And then the government is worried because if one of them shuts down and the money goes off, people will lose their lives. True. And then the whole thing goes back to the government. Right? However, the entrepreneurs also need to build businesses that thrive. Mm. What I think is the major gap 
is there is no cohesive communication between the agencies that create and these policies and this regulatory act and those that are active players in the space. In the market, mm -hmm. yeah. If there is a continuous, you know, very intense conversation, we would say it's okay if you regulate. But is 0.05% is kind of too much, you know, per annum. Maybe we could we could reach a much more, you know, uh agreeable, you know, stand mm -hmm. on many of the things that need that was to achieve. But I think that we can't build an ecosystem that thrives mm -hmm. if we don't allow NICDA to do its job. Right. You know, what would happen is that we would have a bunch of amazing tech companies that are thriving that are not supported by the government. Now, the problem mm -hmm. of not being supported by the government is that you can raise money, but at scale, investors are worried because they don't know where the government stands yeah, exactly. on policies and regulations. Yeah. So the government must create policies. Mm. Now, on crypto, for example, you might not like what the government is doing to be on crypto. But the day a crypto uh, shuts down, yeah. you know, and then you lose millions of dollars, that's when you will know that, yes, the government should have made regulations. regulations but is yeah. the government's regulation conducive also for the business? You know, yeah. So we need to find a much more, you know, cohesive, a much more adaptable you know stand where we both can come to the table and say hey, this is what is achievable the government will say this is what we can do mm -hmm. just the same way the government regulated the banking industry because for some of us that are you know 33 today we know the story of the whole banks you know the banking sector used to be shit mm. crazy that if you have money in the bank you better fear for your life Mm, the banking sector used day. to be the banking sector used to be very very bad until someone came and created regulation. I remember the twenty five million dollar uh, twenty five million dollars recapitalization. Sure, yeah. You know, and people all... were not people were not excited about people yes. complain. But now we have some confidence that one bank cannot shut down yes. at I least the CBA exactly. Yes. So we need to yes. get to a point where we allow the regulators to do their job. But Regulation can really kill business. Sure, it does. That's, yeah. that's just what I was about Because exactly. we're seeing what's happening in China currently with tech, you know, exactly. with regulations in tech and mm -hmm. all of these mm -hmm. things. Yes. So the regulators, if they don't want to kill the businesses, mm -hmm. they now need to create regulations and say, hey, we've pushed you guys. Then create opportunities for these tech entrepreneurs to come and talk to them mm -hmm. and say, we love this regulation. I love regulation. I want regulation. But regulations that kill businesses is terrible right so the need that needs to give opportunities for entrepreneurs to sit down with them it's not a day's job yeah. we need to continue to converse continue to talk mm -hmm. until we reach a much more common ground you know right. and if we do that and I, I belong to a couple of different groups uh, of entrepreneurs and i see entrepreneurs already creating even talking to the presidency mm -hmm. creating different pockets of meetings engaging the vice president, engaging the presidency, engaging the Senate, mm -hmm. say, how do we, you know, it oh, might not be palatable today, but yeah. I can tell you, if we continue this way, regulators doing their job, mm -hmm. you know, entrepreneurs actively engaging regulators, what we would have is a system that is a little bit very collaborative yeah. because the regulator would always bring new policies, mm -hmm. would go to courts, against the regulator, not because we hate them, but because we want a well, much more yeah. harmonious environment. Yeah. And in the next 10 years, the new set of entrepreneurs that will now be coming, we now remember That's the days, just like we are remembering $25 million recapitalization, mm -hmm. remember the days when NIDA Came up with regulation, sure, we're not yeah. excited, but we reached a common ground. And that's what I think the future is going to hmm, look like. That's exciting. <laughs> that's okay. interesting to learn. Yeah, yeah. well, uh, earlier when you were talking, you mentioned a few things like challenges here and there. I feel like, just as you've said, there's a lot of factors that affect Nigerian businesses that allow them to struggle a lot. And some businesses even end up shutting down. So I, I believe that so far, so good. Retiva has been doing well. What are the challenges that you have faced in your journey so far? I think that why well, have you overcome them? Right? <laughs> well, that is like bicycle. You, I think it's the mindset of uh, I have a mentor, um, Dio, um, who is the CEO of Zecrest. One of the things I've learned from him is you have to wake up every morning anticipating another problem. You know, as an entrepreneur, you have to anticipate. Number one, you're serving humans, you're serving people. Mm -hmm. 
are people monotonous? No. Are they homogeneous? No. There's some set of people that would like your values, some would not like them. You need to anticipate problems mm -hmm. and challenges and all that as an entrepreneur. Um, I, most of the recommendation I would say that really helped us to get to this point are kind of the uh, recommendations that might not apply to every entrepreneur because people exist at different levels. Sure. But one thing I would say is that if you place your attention on values and you place heavy attention on systems that helps you to live you know beyond your expectation you will win mm. right so you need to be ready to make some compromises today you know because you want to test your system and see is this system sustainable mm. so running a company is about building structures building systems and every time it's about building systems you know I'll give you a very interesting example, right? Our financial system as a company at the very early stage wasn't clean. Right? It was a little bit of, you know, all that here and there. But we woke up one day and we said, enough of this. We can't continue this way. We outsourced to an amazing, amazing, you know, accounting, you know, company. And they took off that entire body of us. They're helping us to. So running a business is about building structures, it's about mm -hmm. building systems. But you also need to remember that you're playing in markets that is different from the market you watch on YouTube. Sure. Yeah. It's an Nigerian market. Mm -hmm. So as an entrepreneur, yeah. you need to do three things that I mentioned to my colleagues every time I learned it when I was doing my master's in strategy. Number one is that you need to sense. You need to be, you need to always sense the market. Mm. You know, the mar market can be very deceitful. You know, telling you what is not. So you need to, you need to be sensing as an entrepreneur to, to understand what the market is saying, and to be ready to also say, no, the market is saying this, but I'm not going to do this. Because if you listen to the market every time, the market will tell you what they want today, and not what will help your business thrive in the next 10 years. You know, So sensing always is critical. Then when you sense, you need to be super, super aggressive as an entrepreneur to seize opportunities. Right. You need to go all in for opportunities. Like yeah. When an opportunity comes yeah, your way, exactly, <laughs> you need to be ready to partner with the bigger guys, mm -hmm. the smaller guys, exploring all the Jews and trying to like get all the opportunities out there. Yeah. I think the final thing is being adaptable. Yeah. Um, you, you just have to adjust every time. I, I used to tell my, my, my colleagues and say, I know the vision of what Utiva wants to become in the future, but I don't know how we're going to get there. Hmm. And if you ask me what we're going to be doing by next year, I don't even know. So when investors come and they say, oh, what's the plan for next year? I'll tell you what he wants to hear. But I'm listening to the market. If the right. market moves this way, you have to change. I'm pivoting. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to say, oh, I deliver the strategy to my investors and I said we're going to do this next year. And that's no, what's no, 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 no. been done. You know, especially in a market that is not right, a market that does not give you templates, you need to be ready to adjust, to adapt. I mean, for instance, if you had asked me two months ago, like, hey, Tyler, let's do something for kids, I can tell you for free, I would have said no. <laughs> like, 100% no. You know, but we sensed the market and then we realized that something is happening to these kids. Yeah. And then we launched the utivakids.com, which is a new learning program for children to mm -hmm. learn tech. You know, so whatever I tell you today about the future, <laughs> you don't believe it. I like your energy. Because I am going to change. Okay, I'm waiting yeah. for what the market is telling me. Mm -hmm. I'm sensing the market. If the market, for instance, if you have told me at the beginning of this year that Italio, you guys are going to have an office facility, I hate offices. Hmm. I just want to work in a co-working space. I'm a coffee person, so I'm working from a coffee shop. Hmm. But the market is saying we should office. create content yeah. and then we just have to build, yeah. uh, get into a new studio. Mm -hmm. and so listen to the market. That's what we have done as a business. We listen so much to what the market is saying. We adapt, we adjust, and then we provide values hmm. back to the market. I hope you guys have been following so far and you've learned a lot. So we'll be going on a short commercial break and when we return, we'll go move to the fun segment. There is time for everything. It doesn't matter if it's food, work, hobbies, or just life. Millennials are always on the go, trying to make things happen. Millennial talk, enlightening and supporting millennials on finance and growth for personal development. 
Join us on Millennial Talk every Thursday by 10 a.m. Start developing yourself today. And we are back. If you've been following us so far, Aita has been discussing with us, you know, how to develop, you know, the talent, Nigerian talent for the future of work. So, Aita, please tell us, what do you do outside Utiva, outside building Ooh, tech, outside, outside, you know, outside of anything related to work? What do you do for fun? I mean, if, I, if I'm not in Utiva, I'm doing politics, right? I right. Know so you, wow, you don't even look like a politics uh, person. Yeah, I, know, I, know, I, know. I love politics so much. Um, I feel that we need to get more young people mm -hmm. to support the revolutors. Mm. You know, I've worked with a couple of different people in politics, and I know that nobody's really wicked. You know, nobody wants to kill. Ni I mean, there are a few people that want ha, to kill ha, Nigeria. Uh, there are a few wicked <laughs> people, but there are what we have is a bunch of politicians that really love their country too, mm. but they just don't know how to solve some problems. Okay, you know, uh, but we have a bunch of young people that know how to solve the problem. Okay. But they are not in They don't have the opportunity. Okay, but I yeah. feel like this is fun segment and I'm getting serious again. <laughs> <laughs> so we want to know what you actually do for fun. Okay, so, so if I'm not doing like politics, yeah. what are you doing? I mean, I love, to, I love to hang out with my friends so much. Um, I don't like it. So when they hang out, it's very classy and premium. I don't like it. Okay. I, don't, I don't like the, you know, the I like the street hangouts. When I'm on the street and my boys are doing a song and I'm okay. wearing round neck and short. And we're arguing about unnecessary things. <laughs> and, you know, I just like the street life. I'm mm -hmm. so much on the streets. I love, you know, hanging out with my Interacting. friends. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm, on Friday nights, every Friday I'm in the club. I, I love to go wow. to the club. Yeah. And when I go to the club, I don't go to the club alone. I'm probably <laughs> going to the club with like, I'm going to the club with like 15 other ah, friends. Okay, that's like, a whole gang. Yeah, it's a, it's a movement. <laughs> um, I love that. Um... I think that's the major thing, but I'm a game person, so I love Ooh, to play. I'm a game like person. I like to play games. Like um, PS yeah. or actually. No, no, I, mean, I, mean, I like to play like board games, games, like board oh, okay. games. I love board okay. games. Yeah. So I think I do for fun. Yeah. Mm, that's mm, interesting. Great. That's nice. Too. But we like to say that, that, that this aspect of um, this fun segment is sponsored by Mr. Choco, Sister Choco. So we're going to be asking you a trivia question, and if you get it right, we give you a prize for Ooh. today. So over to you, Bukumi. <laughs> All right, so for this part, we're going to be asking you a question, and if you get it right, you win the prize. But if you don't get it, sorry. <laughs> okay, so in Q2 2020, what was the unemployment rate? Since you are helping, you know, young Ooh. people move out of unemployment, so in Q2 2020, what was the unemployment rate? Nigeria. Nigeria. Right? Yes. Nigeria. Yeah. All right, that's going to be around thirty-one percent. Oh, what you? Didn't get it, right? <laughs> did, did he get it? No, he didn't. Get it. Oh, no, oh, he tried. Oh, he tried. Oh, yeah. Twenty-seven point one percent. It's currently we have thirty-three point three percent. Why did I not get that? <laughs> <laughs> but but because um, this is like the first session of the segment, we will still be. Is that the only question I get? Yeah, it's just one question. Like this is just one question. But because this is like you know the first um, um, segment for this um, sponsored session, we are still going to be giving. Um, a tire something because I'm such an amazing guest. So, <laughs> yeah. So, on behalf of Mr. Choco, Mr. Choco, we present to you this very small package and say thank you for coming on yeah, the we show. Have to you. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys, thank you for joining us on this segment of the show. If you'd like to improve your knowledge on finance, you can visit our website on www.prosharing.com and keep watching. Thank you. Bye.